Many of you watching this are probably familiar with the 5900 bridge video I posted a while back. The results were pretty amazing, but I used all the resources I had at my disposal. That means hundreds if not thousands of dollars of materials, 3D printed jigs, and several pretty fancy tools that not everyone has access to. For this video, I wanted to take a step back and show how a team just starting out with bare minimum resources could still take advantage of this design and hopefully build something that would be very competitive. This picture shows everything I'm going to use for the build. The entire bridge will be built out of a single common 1 8 inch thick sheet of balsa. Everything will be cut with an X-Acto knife and a balsa stripper, and I won't use any assembly jigs. I'll talk about the various tools and techniques as I show the construction. Because I also wanted to document the build process in great detail, I decided to take the approach of showing pictures and narrating what I did after the fact instead of showing the building live. This should make sure everything is clear and simple to follow, but please feel free to reach out to me if you have any specific questions. The very first thing you need to get started is a plan. Because I'm starting with my basic 5900 bridge design, that is the plan I'm going to try and build. When starting from scratch, it's best to draw out the testing area full size on graph paper. You can see here I've drawn the test blocks in the corners 35 centimeters apart. The top part of my side is slightly higher than 15.7 centimeters. When tapered at 80.5 degrees, that makes the loading block at around 15.5 centimeters, which gives us a half centimeter buffer for following this year's height rules of 15 centimeters. This will all make more sense soon if you don't understand what I'm talking about here. I like to tape the graph paper down to the cardboard. I recommend using blue painter's tape as it's meant to not be permanent and easy to peel up if necessary. For the cardboard, use the thickest possible for the best results as we'll be pushing pins into it later. I usually find good cardboard from cutting up heavy shipping boxes. The general idea here is we're going to create the two triangular sides of the bridge first, lean them together, and then connect them with the cross bracing. The first task is to cut the wood for the compression parts of the sides. I've set the balsa stripper at 10 millimeters, which should make the legs plenty strong. Here you can see how it uses the X-Acto blade to cut the strips from a sheet of balsa at the set width. To see this tool in action, check out my balsa library video where I show it being used. I have cut four complete strips from my sheet. If you've watched my balsa library video, you know why I've cut so much extra wood. It's to make sure we have a balanced build as we want all four leg pieces to be as close as possible in strength. The density in each sheet of balsa can vary quite a bit, so it's a good idea to cut normalized pieces to choose from, even if you're working with a limited supply. Here I'm choosing a normalized length of 30.5 centimeters, which allows me to get three pieces per strip and the length is similar to what I've used before, which helps me compare pieces to prior builds. Once you have all the pieces cut up, it's important to weigh each piece and write the mass on the stick using a sharpie. Here you can see the results of all 12 pieces I have to choose from. This sheet of balsa is pretty consistent, which is nice to work with, but even still, there is a range from 0.91 grams to 1.16 grams. I'm going to choose the four identical pieces at 1.02 grams for this build. Next up is to cut the two top pieces at 5 centimeters each. For this build, I'm just using one of the extra leg pieces to cut from. It's also good to record the mass for the build log. I'm choosing the primary tension members to be 5 millimeters wide. This is a pretty conservative choice at 1 8 inch thick, but I want to make sure this isn't a failure point for this build. Like with the leg pieces, I'm cutting three full strips to create options for the tension members. We only need two, but it's best to have them be a matching pair if possible. The normalized length for the tension members is 38 centimeters, so with three strips, that will give us six pieces to choose from. Similar to the legs, it's important to weigh every piece and record the mass on the balsa itself. I'm going to choose a matching pair of 0.64 gram tension members for this build. The final material that we need is for all the cross bracing. Usually this is done by using thin balsa, say 1 20th of an inch thick, and then cutting the wider part with the stripper. But if all you have is 1 8th of an inch thick balsa, it is possible to cut the thin side with the stripper. Here I have it set to just over 1 millimeter, and you can see how it looks going through the sheet. I only need a couple strips for the build, but I'll cut a few extra just in case. Here you can see all the material ready to go for the entire build. 
I have laid out the pieces in the general position they need to be to visualize a completed side. The first step is to trim the leg pieces. Carefully put one leg piece precisely where it needs to be using the graph paper as a guide. With a straight edge and a sharpie, draw the line you need to cut at the top. Without moving the leg, again using the graph paper as a guide, use the sharpie to draw the line to cut at the base. Repeat the process with the other leg and cut on the lines with your X-Acto knife. Once you have both legs done, you can tape them in place with blue painter's tape. Make sure the bottom parts of the leg are in exactly the correct position, but don't worry if the top parts don't touch. Place the 5 cm top part into position and use the sharpie to draw an outline around the piece. This shows where to apply the glue and helps align the piece when it's time to glue it in place. The same process is used for the tension members. The side pieces are now ready to glue. Start with the top and be sure to apply enough glue to cover the entire surface area inside the outlined area. Try to work quickly as you don't want the glue to start drying before you place the part. These joints are very important, so be sure to hold them together tightly for about 10 seconds each. If everything goes well, this is what a completed side should look like so far. Repeat the entire process to create a second identical side. Using the X-Acto knife, trim away the excess balsa along the top and at the tension members. It helps to put the piece on a flat surface and trim it away using many light cuts rather than to try and cut it in one attempt. Now it's time to sand these pieces to get them even more identical. I like to tape them together as shown. Take special care to make sure the bottom pieces are aligned. Those parts make up what will be touching the testing surface, so if they are not together, the bridge won't be level. Use the sanding block to gently sand all the surfaces. I'm just showing the block on the table here, but you can hold the parts in your hand to do this sanding. Here are what the pieces look like after a bit of sanding. The final thing to do with the sides is to mark the points where the cross members will be attached. If you forget to do this now, it's possible to do it later, but it's much easier to get it accurate this way. I like to record the weight of the completed sides for reference and to make sure that they are very close to identical. To weigh an odd shaped part like this triangle side, it works well to use a large cup and zero the scale using the tear button. Once that is done, the scale will only record the additional mass. Here you can see that the sides are very close to each other at 2.33 and 2.30 grams. Now it's time to start the assembly process. The idea is to stand the two sides up and somehow taper them in symmetrically so the top only has a 1 cm gap. This is the part that is best done with a 3D jig, but it's possible to do it without one if you are careful. I know my design has a base width of 6.2 cm, so I've drawn lines on my graph paper that far apart on both sides. By placing a push pin exactly at that line on each side and using a little tape, it's possible to stand up one side on the cardboard. Repeating the process for the other side, now you can see both sides are standing up. The problem is they are standing up parallel to each other and we want them to taper in to a 1 cm gap according to the design. My solution to this problem was to cut a 2 cm scrap piece of wood from one of the extra leg pieces and tape that to the top. With a 2 cm piece taped to the top, that made the gap almost exactly 1 cm, which was what I was looking for. As you might have guessed though, this isn't very stable. Looking down the end of the bridge, you can see that it's leaning a bit to the right. Again, this is a problem best solved with a 3D jig, but without that, we can at least do better than this. I used another push pin to prop up the left side a bit. Take some time to get this as symmetrical as possible. Looking down the end of the bridge, things are looking pretty good now. The next step in the build is somewhat tedious, and that is cutting all the cross members, both the horizontal ones and the X cross bracing pieces. I start with cutting all 10 horizontal cross pieces, 5 on a side, using the lengths from my previous build. 
I wind up recutting these a bit later because I didn't account for the thicker legs I'm using here compared to the other build, but for now, here they are weighed together. Next I cut all the X cross bracing pieces. There will be 20 pieces in total, but for now just measure them all out and leave them in 5 groups of 4. Here they are all weighed together at 0.39 grams. This is where I discovered my horizontal cross bracing pieces were a little too short, so I recut them all a little longer and weighed the new group. Before I start gluing anything, I make sure everything is laid out exactly like my diagram. If you recall, this design alternates the horizontal cross members on top and bottom of the side. The solid lines will go on top and the dotted lines will be put on last on the underside. I start with the three horizontal pieces that are glued on top. These three pieces correspond to the solid lines on my drawing. I have moved the other identical pieces to the entire back side of the workspace for later use. I have also moved the dotted line cross pieces to the middle of the assembly so I don't confuse them with anything else. These will be put on last. Notice the X cross member pieces are still not cut up and are waiting to be used next. Here I'm starting to glue the X cross bracing. Each long piece on the left contains parts for both sides of the bridge. I first cut that piece in half and immediately put half on the back side of the assembly for later use. I then cut the remaining half in half to use on the side I'm working on. Don't forget to glue the center of these X's. For the longer pieces shown here, you can slip the glue in after the edges are glued down. Now I've finished all the X's for one side. Notice the five pieces on the back side of the assembly nicely organized and waiting to be used later. For the shorter X pieces, I like to mark the center X location with a sharpie and put a drop of glue there as well as the ends. For all these cross member joints, I glue both ends down at once, putting the glue in place first and then quickly holding them in place with one hand on each side. This takes some practice, but works well once you get the hang of it. Now I have rotated the entire cardboard assembly 180 degrees, so I'm working on the unfinished side. You can see the pieces are already nicely organized and ready to be installed. Using the exact same process as before, I start with the horizontal cross pieces. And then the lower X cross members. And finally, the top X cross members. Here is a picture of the work completed so far and the bridge is still pinned and taped to the cardboard. The final cross bracing needs to go on the underside of the bridge, so it's time to remove it from the cardboard. The top spacing part is also no longer needed. The easiest way to glue those underside pieces on is to do them one side at a time with the bridge laid down like this. Here I have marked the locations for the final pieces. And here the pieces have been glued in place. Now the other side has been done and this is the completed bridge before final sanding. For a more professional look and to lose a tiny bit of mass, it's nice to sand all the edges. Here is the bridge after a bit of careful work with the sanding block. Don't forget to check the level of your bridge in multiple directions. With no additional work, this bridge was almost perfectly level left to right. Front to back, the level is not perfect, but I decided it was good enough. Generally, it doesn't need to be perfect, but the closer it is, the better. Here is the mass right after being built at 5.63 grams on my inexpensive scale. And here is the mass after spending 24 hours in a dry box using my more precise scale showing 5.40 grams. That kind of weight loss is typical when using a dry box and can easily be maintained during an actual competition by only removing the bridge right before weigh-in. Here is the live testing of the bridge. If you are new to my channel, this is my testing table. I am pouring sand in a funnel off the left side of the screen and it's going down the PVC pipe into the bucket. I custom built a loading cell which dynamically measures the mass as it's being loaded and retains the maximum value when the device fails. This means that it's not important to stop the sand from entering the bucket after failure like it is during in a normal competition. 
The display is measuring the load of everything below the load cell hook, which doesn't account for the dead weight above, which includes the loading block and chain. In this case, that mass is 149 grams, which gets added to the final displayed weight for the total mass held. Normally it would not be necessary to test anything beyond 15 kilograms, but I wanted to see how much this bridge would hold and to get some nice high speed footage when it breaks. Here is the high speed footage of the failure. Because this bridge held almost 22 kilograms, knowing the first failure mode isn't really that critical as everything is overbuilt, but it looks like it was a leg failure on the backside. If I were to build another bridge like this using the same constraints, I would definitely shrink the legs and tension members by a couple millimeters. The fact that the actual efficiency of this balsa only bridge was over 4,000. If scaled down a bit, a 4 gram and 5,000 plus score bridge seems very possible using just a single sheet of balsa. I hope you enjoyed seeing this getting started bridge and it gives you an idea of what is possible even if you don't have access to expensive materials or other fancy tools. As always, thanks for watching and feel free to reach out with any specific questions.